Welcome back to Pop Goes the Colonel, where we dive into the latest in pop culture, music, television, and movies. I'm your host, Gracie Moore. And I'm Greg Greenwell. And we've got a pretty fun, breezy spring break episode in store for you guys today. Definitely, definitely. We're recording this just before we're parting ways for our week off. And I know that both of us are in dire need of a break, a reset. Um, But in the meantime, uh, we're going to be giving y'all our thoughts on some prominent new releases. We hinted at last episode, namely Ariana Grande's Eternal Sunshine and Bleacher's fourth self-titled LP, plus a few new singles here and there. We'll also, for the first time, be taking questions from you all, and we hope that you guys enjoy it and your spring breaks. So why don't we get right into Eternal Sunshine, the uh, the ponytail of it all? Um, it's been over three years since our last full-length project from Ariana Grande, um, Positions, which I thought was ridiculously lackluster and has aged quite poorly, in my opinion. Um, and much has certainly changed for her since then, um, acting yeah. in a musical blockbuster, divorce, homewrecking allegations. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't wish to delve too, too much into her personal life, but... Much was at stake, I feel, with this new record. Um, Gracie, just off the bat, what are your like base level thoughts? I was genuinely surprised. I did not give Miss Ponytail enough credit this time around. So I listened like 1202. That was my first listen was her new album. Um, first time around, I was honestly a little bit bored up until like halfway through the album so once i heard supernatural yeah she had me intrigued um like overall her vocals were incredibly clear and distinct her oh, yeah. diction is amazing um the production was so impressive i loved like the sound of it it was very different than what i was expecting from her um a few like specifics i think that the run of we can't be friends wait for your love i wish i hated you imperfect for you and then ordinary things was absolutely crazy those four songs were very well done i thought some of my favorites from the album i think that yes and did not really belong on this album i agree it or at least it should not have been the lead single Right. right. I don't think it gave a good tone to the album. It didn't start her off very strongly. Um, Yeah. I really didn't start to appreciate it until, like, my second listen. I really started to like it more that time around. Um, Sometimes it didn't feel super cohesive, and I didn't really get the concept. I know we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. Um, But those are my... uh, thoughts off the bat what uh, what about you yeah i think for the most part i agree with you um all i have to say is that ariana grande i've never said anything bad about you you are my friend um i surprisingly like you did not hate this at all yeah. uh we talked about this literally at midnight texted me this isn't that bad yeah and i agreed um i don't think it's without its flaws though um but the sort of like ariana grande max martin Ilya trio is so surefire to me that's like how i know ariana grande and like how i associate her with her music and everything i prefer those bigger pop numbers those more synth heavy more electronic as opposed to her r&b numbers stuff like that um whenever they're recording sessions whenever they're you know doing their songs there's bound to be at least two or three like genuinely excellent pop songs and i think that could be said for this album uh there were tracks i really liked tracks i was indifferent about and some that I didn't really care for at all. Um, I'd, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that We Can't Be Friends, Wait For Your Love is the best offering here. Agreed. I mean, talk about like a just perfect, great pop song. Right. It's so it's so like Robin. It's so Carly Rae Jepsen. Very Dancing On My Own. It's kind of like Ariana Grande's Dancing On My Own. Yeah. Lyrically and sonically too. Um, why did we hide this when it came to picking lead singles? Um, that chorus, like that big, like, pulsating synth in the background with the chorus behind it is like pure gold pure gold to my ears um i think this sing it's a single now too so let me make that clear there is a video for it Mm -hmm. um i think it gives a much much better look into the album and its themes than yes and did um yes and just felt very haphazard very nothing burger kiss off yeah um I, i enjoyed yes and for a few listens but after that i sort of just gave up on it 
Um, I'm also glad we've deviated, for the most part, from the trap beats, the weird ad libs, the skirt skirt, yeah, of it all, uh, the pseudo rapping. Uh, this is very much a pop record, and I'm happy about that. Yeah. Uh, like the past, her past few works have just felt to me like very disingenuous sonically and lyrically. It's not how I know her. It's not how I think the general public has grown up knowing her, especially like her first three albums are pure pop. Like, let's make that very clear. Like a little theater here and there first two albums but like after that it's pure pop sure. um i think this is very much a return to form and i'm glad that she's singing again and enunciating again like you mentioned um she can do straight pop excellently and i was so frustrated when she deviated that for a while or deviated from that for a while um like you said i enjoyed songs like supernatural and the title track too uh very breezy like very clear-cut max martin pop yeah. numbers uh her vocals on the former are like so so clear and crisp um in terms of what i didn't like i think more broadly and you touched on this um i feel like this album's themes or like general concept just didn't really carry no. as much weight as they were like made out made out to be like this is like this was a big deal like she was coming off of some very pivotal like personal moments and yeah. like everybody was expecting a lot from this record and i think she gave some of that but also the rest felt a little half-baked and the thoughts around this album felt a little half-baked yeah um i can't tell just from a few listens already like we said this album came out last night but it, it's like i can't tell if she's trying to play a character here or doing a bit because there's some songs that i think really hammer home what the album is about you know, like crawling out of a hard period, leaning on yourself, finding joy, finding grace. But others like True Story or like That Boy Is Mine feel almost like satire lyrically and are like a giant middle finger to that overarching theme of I like self-love and like just, you know, being graceful about things. And I didn't really care for either of those tracks, to be honest. Um, they sounded great, but like lyrically, just very half-baked, very haphazard. Um, I agree with that. I love a kiss-off track. I do, but I don't think these really did what needed to be done, especially in terms of upholding that theme. Um, I'm hoping that things will maybe start to grow on me with a few more listens. You mentioned that, too. Um, sure. I like some of the record right now, and I think I'm open to enjoying more, sure. definitely. But, um, yeah, like not horrible by any means. Um, I just think that there could have been a bit more exploration bit more consideration of the themes here especially with the loose concept like eternal sunshine of the spotless mind like that was that you were right about that that was a concept that was being explored here sure. um but things sound pretty great and uh, sonically and vocally um definitely a step up from the last two releases or so i completely agree so why don't we touch on the bleachers self-titled just for a moment we had mentioned it last episode and this isn't a huge release by any means but Jack Antonoff is pretty darn big right now, coming yeah. off a Producer of the Year win at the Grammys, and I think this could shape up to be the band's biggest album yet, especially now that they're signed to Dirty Hit. Yeah. Um, me, personally, I'm about two and a half listens through, and I like it. Um, I don't know that it's my favorite from the band, being a longtime fan. Um, it's a little clunky at times. Sure. I don't know if you felt the same, um, yeah. especially lyrically. It's incredibly self-referential -ref and mm -hmm. quite odd. Um, which works at times and doesn't at others, I think. I'm just very dense with a lot to say. Um, sonically, it's great. Obviously, Bleachers and Jack have an amazing track record in that department. Uh, producer, Jack is producer of all time, basically. You know, like he's won that award yeah. so many times. He's he's huge and yeah. he's good at what he does. And Extremely. I, I always like sonically what I hear from Jack. Um, but yeah, lyrically, there's there's high highs here and there's low-ish lows. I don't want to say there's super low lows. Um, the first half, in my opinion, is killer. I enjoy the opener. I am right on time. It's super anthemic. Um, as well as the singles and Jesus is Dead and Isamo. Um, the second half, I think, is going to take a little bit of time to grow on me. Uh, it's a lot slower. It's a lot weirder. Mm. Um, but I didn't strongly dislike anything I heard by any means. Um, just need more time to digest, I think. Sure. It's dense it's dense sure i yeah i haven't had multiple listens yet i haven't even had a full run through of the album sorry jack but i was super apprehensive about eternal sunshine yeah. so that was the first track i turned on um but what i've heard so far is pretty good i agree um i really enjoyed jesus is dead isimo self-respect was one that i really i mm -hmm. liked more than i um thought i would have just based off what it was I found it, um, some of what I've listened to a little bit slow at times. It was, um, I agree, it was a split between like really, really good and then a little bit underwhelming. 
like you said, nothing was inherently like bad that I've heard. No, definitely not. But it was just some of it was a little underwhelming. But I will say I just I love how they do synth and brass and all the different sounds. They love a of sax bleachers. solo. They love a sax, sax solo. And listen, bleachers, I agree. I love anything brass, like in songs. It's just such a like niche little thing. Like it's if vintage, I hear a brass, it's I just new, it's I'm like add like yeah, like like that song mm-hmm. added to my playlist. Absolutely. But yeah, what I've heard is pretty good. I'm anxious to give it a full listen and some re listens, get a few more listens in, um, yeah. and really be able to have some stronger opinions on it. Yeah. Um, I had an inkling that this one would be a little bit more experimental, um, and I thought that it deviated, for the most part, from that, like, springsteen cosplay that I mentioned last semester. Yeah. Not last semester. Last episode. Can you it tell that we're ready like for last break? Semester. Can you tell that we're ready for break? <laughs> um, yeah, but they're known for that sort of springsteen sound, and I don't mind that a lot. I think there's a void to be filled there. Yeah. I love a, I love a dad rocky, like, you know, anthemic 80s number. Yeah. Um, but I love that this newer record pulled from bands like The National and bands like The 1975 for something a little less polished and a little more off kilter. Yes. But yeah, like you said, definitely want to spend a little more time with it, but not disappointed at all by it. Okay, how about the Marias? I don't know how many of our listeners will know the Marias, but if you don't, you should. Oh yeah, you guys need to be on this wave. Um, yeah. We absolutely need to plug their new song. It's called Run Your Mouth. Um it came out with their new album announcement. Their um, their new album is called Submarine. I think it's hitting not too far in the future. I want to say in end of May, beginning of May, something May? like that. Yeah, I think. Um, and they dropped this little ditty to promote it called Run Your Mouth. And it is one of the grooviest things that I have heard all yeah. year so far. And I'm not the biggest fan of theirs. Like, I've, I've definitely given an album or two a listen yeah. and then some singles. Um, didn't really stay in my head, but I liked what I heard all the time. Like, it's, it's very, like... It's good, like, indie pop music. It's, yeah. like, it's very groovy. It's very, like, I don't know, chill. Yeah. And yeah. this one is definitely the same in that vein. It's It just seems, it's such a cool song. It's, like, a sexy song, very sleek. Um, but this this track and this album, especially with the visuals, just feel very elevated, very, like, 90s, the aesthetics of it all, yeah. and the sonic landscape. So, yeah, I definitely really like this single. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about it other than give it a listen, give them a listen, I'm super excited for Submarine. The trailer that they released for it oh, yeah. was so sick and so well done, and it had me unbelievably excited. Okay, so we had mentioned that we were doing a Q&A segment for the first time, yeah. and we had both asked you guys on Instagram maybe just to send us some few questions about pop culture, about mm-hmm. movies, about music. Um, I think we got most of that. Some of them were unrelated questions, and I'm not including all of them because some of them were not appropriate. Thanks, everyone. Um, Thanks, you guys. But we did get a good turnout of questions, and we want to answer them. Um, First question was, can James Gunn save what Zack Snyder ruined? Ooh. (laughs) Mm. Um, Interesting question. Interesting question. Um, I am not... I'll, admittedly, I'm not a huge comic book movie property fan anymore. Sure. Back in my day, I was quite the nerd. Um, but I do pay attention every once in a while to that. I've grown yeah. out of it a little bit, but I, I still pay attention to it. And yeah. I have been paying attention to the DC Cinematic Universe, like overarching property and what's been going on with that or lack thereof. Um, certainly some turbulence there in terms of yeah. output and uh, reactions to their properties and films. And I do think that there was a bit of, you know, disconnect and discrepancy with the source material and with what audiences were wanting from DC films yeah. compared to what they got from Marvel films for so long. Um, Zack Snyder, I think, is um, a great director, a great director, and he has a nice like vision, and he's he has a has a great vision for aesthetics and just visuals. And I don't really think that he was what dc needed i think he served his purpose for a few years but in terms of helming a universe i don't think Zack snyder should have been the end game for that um and i'm happy to see that james gunn has a pretty clear vision of at least the next 10 years for dc 
Um, I'm excited to see a Superman movie. Yes. I'm not sure what else he has in store. I think a few more off kilter things, but his Superman movie seems really cool. Yeah. And David Cornsway, I think is his name, seems like a cool Superman. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely excited to see that. I think that's hitting next year. Yeah, I completely agree. I love what James Gunn did with Guardians of the Galaxy for the most part. I, um, I haven't seen, like you, I was a little bit of a of a superhero Marvel nerd, but I never really got into DC as much yeah. as I did Marvel, early Marvel, not late Marvel. Uh, but I, I, I think that James Gunn can definitely take it a different direction in a direction that the people will want to see more. Yeah. I think he's going to please the audiences more than Zack Snyder did. I don't know if he will be able to completely save DC and all of that brand and property, but I do think that there is definitely potential. I, like you, am very excited for Superman. I'm really hoping that that will be a kind of good refresher for DC. It could it could really change the course of where they take their movies, and it would be nice to have some superhero movies that aren't like marvel and like some actual yeah. cool superhero movies maybe a little bit darker even like a little less heavy on the humor a humor, little yeah but yeah. can you tell we're sick of marvel movies yeah we very much are <laughs> we've, we've burned that bridge a little bit but yeah, yeah. I, I think something more palatable was incoming and yeah i definitely think Zach or James Gunn can bring something new to the table that Zack Snyder maybe had lacked, sure. but I'm not sure that like James Gunn is going to save anything per se. I agree. So the next question that we've got, what movie has most impacted pop culture and other forms of media the most in the past 10 years? So this one is a complex question very and hefty. a very good question. I have a lot of different thoughts about this so my my approach to this is a more positive impact that some movies have made so right. i think that for one and this is a very extremely popular movie but la la land i think that oh la yeah. la land was very impactful um like visuals color cinematography wise uh it did a musical in a way that i don't think has really been done before i think that people who not who don't usually like consume musical media um i think that they enjoyed it more than they would have for other musicals if that makes sense right i think that it really changed how movies uh, maybe not fully changed but it did impact how movies view color and how color can move a movie along in the storyline and how it can impact what the audience feels and their emotion and equating color to emotion in film and I don't know there was just a whole lot of things within the cinematography and the visuals of that movie that I think were extremely impactful another one that I think was super impactful Parasite um, having a form film like that become so popular like here in the U.S. and I think that it really made people appreciate you've said this before but you know parasite made people appreciate foreign films a lot oh yeah it won best picture yeah like i mean it just i think it really changed the way people view foreign pictures and now um you've got films like anatomy of a fall and the society of the snow and like other other form films that are being appreciated more and uh parasite was also just incredibly done it oh had yeah. such a great uh conversation about class and wealth and it was just so amazing if you have not seen that movie please go it's watch so it good. please but what do you what do you think i think i'm gonna be a little bit more negative and we already dogged we on marvel balance. we need the balance you're my good cop i'm your bad cop yeah. <laughs> um we've already dogged on marvel once today and we're doing it again mm -hmm. i think avengers endgame has sort of negatively impacted um pop culture and other forms of media mm -hmm. and maybe just um later marvel movies in general yeah, i would say yeah um just the commodification of art and uh just like i i love a comic book movie i am a nerd at heart like i can't take that away from myself but i wish that you know with with the rise of marvel movies over the past like 15 years 
they became more of a product than they were a solid property or an art form. Sure. Like these are adapting art or comic books are art. Let me make that clear. I do believe that comic books are art. And I think that comic book movies can be art too. But I think with the world building and with the, you know, money making of it all, I think they started to lose their shine their luster a little bit yeah um and as films like avengers endgame rolled around and then these newer marvel movies and these disney plus shows i'm i'm just at a loss like i i'm burnt out i don't want to hear it anymore and i think that they've sort of normalized this you know let's film an entire movie on a green screen let's let's push you know four or five movies or properties out a year additional tv shows let's let's spin off let's quality do everything over quality yeah definitely definitely that and i i think the quality is missing and the quantity is there and i do think um that's impacted other things like star wars used to be like one of my favorite things ever yeah. and i think star wars has sort of gone the marvel route and it hasn't paid off i don't know i'm i, I would hope that marvel is taking note of this and sort of like starting to reset do i think that i will ever get back into it again i'm not sure um not probably at this stage in my life but maybe later on if they like course correct but yeah i would say if i had to be negative about it i would say that yeah the marvel movies avengers endgame just movies filmed on a green screen in general and pushed out for commercial purposes have sort of impacted negatively the way that you know movies have like the impact they have on pop culture and other forms of media yeah absolutely our next question is a fun one and i'm excited to answer it uh you guys asked what artist has the best aura of all time so fun that is a fun question very unique um i i don't pay a lot of attention to you know the mythical the super the spiritual the supernatural of it all but i like the concept of an aura i agree and i like observing that especially in musicians um i do have two that Mm -hmm. i think have really great auras i would say that stevie nicks yes my witchy supernatural queen has a phenomenal aura if i had to describe it it's probably like smoky black and dark blue and yeah. you know calls wolves and <laughs> howls at the moon probably absolutely and then i think lord probably also has a very good aura oh, if yeah. i had to scan her and see oh, her yeah. aura it's probably very colorful very in tune with nature very in tune with herself and her soul and everything so yeah i definitely lord and stevie nicks yeah those are two really really great ones i had a little bit more trouble coming up with some good ones but I do think Caroline Polachek, I think that she oh, yeah. has a very good aura. I think SZA, too. SZA, definitely. I'm like, there's something about you. There's something she about gets it. you. She gets it. She's so down to earth. She is so, like, just very earthy. And, and it's hard. I, I, I cannot describe her. Like, in very tune well. with nature and in yeah, tune with yeah. herself and the world. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. I just, there's just something about her. But. Caroline Polachek and SZA definitely are my two with the best auras. This next question, <laughs> this one's a fun one. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is your most controversial pop culture hot take? I think we're in agreement here. We, we deliberated are. prior, and I think we've come up with one that we're both in agreement on. Yes. We have to say, we don't like TikTok. No. We do not like TikTok. No. Not really at all. Not really at all. I don't have the app. I don't, I don't care either. to download the app. I will say, Colonel Realness, I Bryce Toll, we love you so much. Bryce I will, Toll, yes. I will view your TikToks on the internet, my on my laptop, computer, every on my laptop. Time. I will get on TikTok and I'll, you know, watch your TikToks mm-hmm. and I promote them on Instagram all the time. I ride or die for you, Bryce. But in overall, I don't really care that much for TikTok. Why don't you care for TikTok, Gracie? It's the music aspect mainly. It's the TikTok talkification of everything like right. oh my gosh when i went to see the new mean girls movie in theaters and there were a bunch of tiktok references and not just references just blatant use of tiktok throughout the whole entire movie making like clips and music just to go on tiktok just to go viral just for the commercial i just wish i feel like tiktok has just ruined music in a way art Art, in general not ruined completely it's not a lost cause but i don't like what it's done with it i don't like that artists are 
some artists are creating music just so it goes viral on TikTok because that's not always a good thing to go viral on TikTok. Like, you should, I think, be really aiming to create music that will be lasting and not a 20-second reel that will go away within, like, a week. I, I completely sense. agree. And also, I just don't like that artists kind of have to use TikTok now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, for KRNL, which if, you, if you're listening and you don't know, is our sister publication, a lifestyle and fashion magazine. Yeah. I profiled a musician for this semester's issue. And um, I was talking to him and he sort of mentioned how he hates social media. Yeah. And he hates having to promote his music on social media or having to, you know, sort of gamify virality and gamify social media and posting just so he can sort of get a you know a few streams or like get a few more streams than he usually does and i completely agree with that i don't like what it's done to art and i kind of hate it and loathe it for that same reason um you know i'm i'm no stranger to hearing a tiktok sound and finding it hilarious i won't lie um and i've laughed at a few tiktoks but i think me and you sort of dwell on twitter that is where we exist that's where we live um and that's X, no that's no better. I mean, that's no better. It's, it's we'll make the that very same, clear. Yeah, it's the same concept, you know. But I think that there's just something. There was also something so different with TikTok. With my, I just was on it way too much when I had it, right. and I just got so sucked into it. And the short videos and like it, it got me. It really sucked me in with my attention span or lack thereof. And so I just eventually had to say, you know what, I'm going to step back. I'm going to let you guys rock, but I am not made for this platform personally. Me neither. And that's okay. That's okay. Because a lot of people aren't made for Twitter and hate Twitter, and that's okay. Follow I love the it. Kentucky <laughs> Colonel on TikTok, though. Yeah, yeah. Shout out. KY Colonel, go right now. Okay, so our <laughs> next question that we got was, what have y'all been listening to and watching new recommendations? I love this one. So what have you been watching and listening to? Okay, I've got I've got a good amount for you guys. So I make playlists for every month where I put in all the music that I've been listening to. Some of the top ones on there right now, uh, The Hills by Rachel Chin or Riri. Oh my gosh, I totally butchered that. I'm so sorry. But that song is spectacular. Never I Need Me it. by her is so good too. That one is also very, very good. Um, I Want to Be Your Right Hand by Nemesis. Um, I believe I pronounced that right. That one is very, very good as well. Um, Anti-Curse by Boy Genius has been on repeat again. Right. Uh, I've really been loving Ray's live album. I think I touched on that a little bit last episode. But she did a live album in London, I believe, with the Heritage Orchestra. Spectacular. So beautiful. Her live vocals are insane. And then Lola Young, specifically Conceited and Wish You Were Dead. Those are both really, really good. She's got a very different unique voice and her songs are just very unique and i really like the sound it's a little darker um i love her her voice a lot and then lots of beyonce and victoria monet ever since the grammys they've just been oh yeah. on repeat of course always should be what about uh music for you what music have you been listening to i've been sort of hopping around a little bit um i've been listening to some Delwater gap um i'm not sure if anybody has ever like I, not that not too unpopular. I think Del Water Gap has broken into like sort of the mainstream. Uh, They're getting there. They're really close, I would say. Very, very like summery, like yeah. pop. And I don't listen to a lot of male musicians, so I'm happy when I find one that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, it's not many. Broken Man by St. Vincent. Her new single is great. I'm very excited for her new album. I agree. Um, it's very like Nine Inch Nails coded, very nihilistic, very like apocalyptic. So I'm excited for that. And um, I've been listening to the album 2093 by Yeet. We have to give Bryce another <laughs> shout out. Bryce put me on to Yeet. And um, I don't listen to a lot of rap. I'm not opposed to it by any means. And I'm known to enjoy a rap song or two. Sure. Um, pop is where I dwell, but I enjoy rap. And Yeet is incredible. He has like this really great knack for sound. And it's so like, it's like arena ready rap. Like he <laughs> could totally go on an arena tour right now. He honestly might be. I have no idea. Yeah. But yeah, thank you, Bryce, for putting me on you. <laughs> I got to listen to some of that. As for uh, TV shows, I've got a couple of TV shows if anyone needs that kind of rec. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Amazon Prime, the TV show uh, adapted from the movie. 
it's really good. It's got uh, Donald Glover and, oh my gosh, Maya something. I can't remember her last name. I need name. to watch that so bad. It's really good. It's really good. I watched it with my boyfriend in like three days. It was spectacular. It was like super witty. The writing was really, really good in it. Like I don't find myself laughing out loud to a whole lot, to be so honest, but it had me like audibly laughing, which I appreciate when something can make me laugh out Definitely. loud. Uh, very good. Highly recommend it. And then this one's been around for a couple years now, but Severance. With, Severance um, is great. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. And it, oh my gosh, if you've seen it, just the end left me baffled. Please watch it. Please. I need another season immediately. Um, my parents watched it. Shout out parents. Hi. Um, but my parents watched it right after me and they also loved it. So no matter your age demographic, you'll probably like it. And if you've seen Parks and Rec, Ben Wyatt's in it, and I'm obsessed with him. And for movies, I'm just trying to finish watching as many Oscar Best Picture nominees before Sunday that I possibly can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What about mo- uh, TV shows and movies for you? I have a really bad habit of putting off watching new things, which is bad considering that now it's sort of our job to no, watch I get and it. review I get new it. things. But It's been a learning process. Um, it's been a learning curve. <laughs> uh, I am currently, my latest obsession is rewatching Lena Dunham's Girls mm. for the third time. This is my third full rewatch of the show. <laughs> it's been out for a little bit. Um, say what you will about Lena Dunham, and I'll probably agree. Um, but Girls is excellent television. Truly, truly formative for me. Like, just, it's one of those shows that you, like, can't help but base some of your personality off of and like the things that you say and like the way that you react to things and the way that you talk about things like girls has really impacted the way that i do that yeah um i'm definitely going to be getting into some movies over break especially now that i have some free time trying to catch some oscar nominated and potentially award-winning films in theaters and online too because that's coming up sure our next question is crazy (laughs) And I thought about omitting it because it, I don't even know that it's pop culture related. Or is it? I don't know. <laughs> Someone asked us, what are your thoughts on aluminum-free deodorant? <laughs> and like I said, I'm, I'm going to allow this just so I can say that while I understand why people would gravitate toward it, I need you all to know that it doesn't work and I can smell you when you're sitting next to me in class. Next question. Yeah, so next question is... <laughs> Another controversial one. <laughs> um, ooh, do you think that Taylor Swift is too big now? I'm kind of getting sick of her. Gray, I'm going to let you start off. All I have to say is that the Tortured Poets Department is in stores and streaming on April 19th. Give it up for the Tortured Poets Department, you snaps, guys. Please. Snaps, everyone. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like, I'll be serious about it. I'll be serious about it. I get why people are saying this. But yeah. I need them to understand that it's not, it's not, it, sh- it shouldn't bother you, first of all. Um, mute buttons exist on social media. So easy. Uh, you can mute topics on Twitter very easily. I think TikTok is the same way. Um, but it's also not her fault. I don't, I don't think so. No, I think. I, agree. I think what makes the majority of people mad about Taylor Swift right now and about the way, like, you know, oh, she's too big. I'm sick of seeing Taylor Swift. I don't think any of that is her problem. I think you see like an ad that maybe uses a Taylor Swift song or, you know, influencers are using Taylor Swift songs because the algorithm and people love that. Um, You know, people are making videos because the user generated content surrounding Taylor Swift blows up because she's the biggest thing on the face of the earth right now. Um, The NFL (laughs) uses Taylor Swift ad nauseum. Um, so does everybody else. I think that's why you're upset. I wouldn't direct that anger at her specifically. What do you think? I agree. I wish I just need everyone to listen and just understand that it is super easy to just turn off the television or scroll past something, a post with her in it. I think that it's just kind of becoming trendy to hate on her again. Definitely. Um, and just let people enjoy the music that they want to listen to um i've never understood why people are so upset when someone likes an artist that they don't like i just i just feel like you could put that effort into something else a little bit more beneficial um you can just like i said turn off the tv or scroll past it you don't have to listen to her 
Um, nobody is forcing you to, to do anything. Um, I would also just like to say that I don't think that anyone hates on male artists the way that they hate on Taylor Swift, no matter uh, what attention that they're being given by the media. So let's just keep that same energy uh, if a male artist blows up the way she does. And let's just let's think about the real reasons that we dislike her and who we do like. And also, let's be serious and just let's chill out. Let's be serious. Let's just take a chill pill. Also, I think what people need to keep in mind is that she's in this like really generative period right now, this yeah. really creative and productive period in her career. Bear in mind that if you don't like her music, I don't have a problem with you, but you need to know that I would say I would say safely in like a year's time or maybe even less than a year, Taylor Swift will take a break. Yeah, she's on a, a massive one. tour right now, and she's working toward you know putting out uh, re-recordings of her albums to owner masters, and she's putting out a new body of work just because she felt inspired and wanted to make that art. Yeah. And I think we should let any musician do that, not just Taylor Swift. Um, yeah. If someone wants to make art, let them make art. Um, but yeah, I just bear in mind that you know if you're upset about it reevaluate your priorities a little bit but you know you're allowed to dislike her music sure, and i don't sure. like every taylor swift song even though Me hand either. hard i'm a swifty yeah. um but like you know it's it's okay it's gonna be okay yeah, if That's you're, you can dislike it but if you're getting like super angry about it like some people are you like you said you just need to reevaluate things a little bit it's totally cool there's plenty of artists i dislike plenty um but i don't let it I don't lose sleep over it. And no, I think some either. people do, which is a little, little wild. Womp, womp. Womp, womp. Okay, well, that is all that we have for you guys today. Um, make sure that you check out Catching Up with the Colonel and Colonel at the Buzzer, our other podcasts on our YouTube and Spotify under Kentucky Colonel. And make sure to follow the Colonel on Instagram, X, and Facebook. Uh, we hope everyone is going to have a wonderful spring break and staying safe. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Thank you.